Are you ready for phenomenal thought leadership from the most well-respected leaders in industry? Join us for stellar conversations and sound advice from trailblazers who have a passion for excellence. Learn best practices that will catapult the culture of your company into a new level of greatness. Welcome to Great Companies, Great Leaders. Your host is Christine Gannon. Welcome to another edition of Great Companies, Great Leaders. I'm Christine Gannon, your host, and just super, super honored and excited today to have with us Amy Lindsay, who is the publisher of AZ Big Media. Amy, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. A little bit about Amy and her background. She is one of the most accomplished media sales executives in Arizona, and I can absolutely vouch for that. As the publisher of AZ Big Media, she oversees a 35-year-old media company that produces eight magazines, 10 business-themed events, and a news website that attracts almost 2 million readers monthly. Prior to her current role, Lindsay was an advertising director at the Phoenix Business Journal, and advertising director at the Arizona Republic, where she was a two-time member of the President's Club for Gannett. In an ever-evolving industry, Lindsay's quest to continuously learn and adapt has been a key component to her continued success. Another one of her strengths, out of many, is Lindsay's ability to understand the challenges faced by business owners. And as a former small business owner herself, she utilizes that experience and her vast knowledge of the local market to effectively consult businesses, help them achieve their goals through marketing, advertising, event participation, and sponsorship. So one of the first questions that I want to ask you is related to challenges leaders are facing today. We're in a time that is pretty crazy in terms of maybe we're coming out of COVID, maybe we're not. It's been unsettled territory for a while. I know you've been in this space and place before. So what's some advice you would give leaders today? Well, first of all, the word you said is maybe. And I think as a leader, that's the hardest thing is, you know, how do you really plan based on a maybe? And, you know, the, the good thing is that none of us know. Um, I think a lot of people have really started to understand that businesses are just doing the best they can. Um, you know, we're, we're coming from a place of grace, you know, that everybody has a different belief system, a different comfort level. You know, we just keep trying to move forward, set our business practices, let people do what they need to do. And, um, you know, for the most part, people, I don't want to say they surprise me, but I've seen the good come out of most people with all of this. Absolutely. I would agree with you. I think it's caused great leaders to rise even higher, quite honestly, and good leaders to become great leaders because there's no template or playbook, really. It's it's change and uh, great leaders do that well. So think about um, as a leader and your team, how do you keep your team encouraged and motivated in the midst of in the midst of such changing times? You know, it's difficult because along with everything else, one of the things that went away were really team celebrations. Mm. So how do you motivate people? And, you know, I joined a company in the midst of COVID. How do you really get to know people and do things? So we've had to be creative. I still do offsite retreats where I take people off and we do more of a, a brainstorming session and really try to plan out the next few events, the next six months, um, and, you know, try to do that with each department. So we have an opportunity that we've created smaller uh, meeting groups here with people that to try to represent every a voice from every department. Um, you know, and a lot of it is truly just organic conversation, being available and making sure you're talking to everybody. And, and probably most importantly, listening to everybody. Absolutely. I think the listening piece is so key, um, not only to the work that employees are doing, but also just checking in with their mental health. We know that that has been a significant challenge over these past 18 to 24 months. And so absolutely listening um, and responding. Yeah, some people just don't handle change well. And and as a leader, you need to know who those people are so that you can help them. You know, some people need a step-by-step plan on the change and others, you just give them the vision and they go with it. And and as a leader, you have to know what, where every person sits within that, that comfort level. Absolutely. And as as we started out this podcast, I shared a little bit about your background and your bio. What are some of the lessons that you've had to learn, even the hard way, about leadership throughout your career? What are some uh, lessons learned? 
Oh, you know, some of them have been a little bit more difficult than others. Um, you know, I've learned probably the biggest thing is that integrity is the one thing that they can't take away from you. Um, and, you know, I, I learned that the hard way, sometimes trading integrity, chasing things. And then you look back and go, at the end of the day, that's what we're left with. That's our legacy for our other employees. So I try to always model that. Um, I, I'm going to say to trust everybody and trust no one all at the same time, which is uh, kind of talking out of both sides. I get that. But, you know, you can't lead people without trust. But inspect what you expect and make sure that the people that at the end of the day, the people that you're trusting are trustworthy. I would say those are probably my two biggest, biggest lessons that I've learned a lot of it the hard way. And, you know, some of it uh, by watching and, you know, emulating people that I respect. Absolutely. There was an integrity summit last week that uh, Greg Ostro and Jerry Colangelo hosted. They talked a lot about, obviously, integrity, because that was the topic of the summit, but they talked a lot about how to shape the team that you're leading with integrity. And everything you just said just resonates so strongly because leaders that spoke were sharing. It really is, if you create this environment of integrity, it's almost viral because your employees mostly want to jump onto that, that bandwagon. It depends on what kind of an environment you're creating in the culture that you're creating. And if you create a space for people to be integrate, they're more likely to show up that way versus if there's a culture that is not, it's easy to jump that way as well. Well, and I think being part of the media world, it's important for us because there has to be integrity in the office um, you know, with other employees, but really in the end result of our product as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Have you had mentors and sponsors throughout your career? And if so, what, what kind of a legacy did they leave with you? You know, I've had a lot of mentors, but really the thing that I find most important is an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say that I've had somebody that has worked for me and with me for years. We no longer work at the same company, but we still consider each other um, accountability partners. And when we're having a struggle at work and we're trying to determine, is it them or me? You know, am I coming across wrong? What, you know, what is my takeaway supposed to be with that? Um, I think having somebody that is going to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, we always have that person we can call and that'll have our back and tell us everything's going to be fine. And that's great, but that's not growth. And I think no matter, even as far as long as I am in my career, I'm not unwilling to grow. I, I'm not lacking of knowledge that I still need to grow and still really need to learn and look at things differently. So my biggest thing would be finding an accountability partner that understands problems at your level, but at most, first and foremost, will be honest with you when they feel that you have handled something wrong or that you need to grow from it. Do you think that's challenging when you're a leader and, and people may or may not want to share something that's, you know, constructive with you? Yes. Um, you know, and, and I'm probably not the easiest one to give constructive criticism <laughs> to sometimes. So that, you know, that's one of those growth areas I've always had to work on is being more receptive to it. Um, I think it's a matter of finding the right person though. You know, somebody, somebody who you truly do respect their output and what they have to tell you. So I think if you can find that person, um, but I do feel it has to be a peer. You know, somebody that works for you or somebody you work for, there's always going to be a mixed message in that. So I think somebody that's you know closer to your level and understands your day-to-day -day problems, I think that helps a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if we go back to integrity and we think about the organizations that you've led and that you're leading today as publisher, how do you ensure that from an integrity standpoint, the values of the organization are built into the core strategies and, and what the team is working on and where you're headed. How, how do you ensure that, that those stay aligned? Well, it, it really depends on the size of the company um, because you know, in a company of this size as the publisher, you know, it, it's easier. The owner and I are aligned. We meet with the management team every week and we make sure that our vision and mission is spoken, it's clear. Um, it's a matter of hiring the right people and giving them a voice. So I, I find it a little bit easier in a company of this level um, in a corporate world, it's harder that you know, you're in a company and the, the company's missions can shift and the integrity system can kind of shift with a larger company. And um, you know, I found that when they no longer align with my integrity values, it's time to maybe look differently, you know, look elsewhere. But in the interim, when you're really doing it, it's what sphere of influence do you have and make sure you maintain integrity with your people 
And it really becomes about protecting your people and doing what you need to do so that your integrity isn't in question. You can't control the masses. Absolutely. You know, I'm thinking about just the influence that the magazines have, right? The influence that your presence on the internet has and, and all the events and, and everything that you're doing. Media is not getting a great um, deal of respect in, in some ways right now during this time, but AC Big Media has kept their integrity. What, what do you think is the secret to all of that and not to get caught up in just a headline or something that might be shock value? I think it is coming straight from the the owner. Hopefully, my a little bit of my influence as a publisher and really our editor in chief. He does a fantastic job. Um, integrity is very important to him as well. Um, I think that helps. The other part is I think by default it's a little easier for us because business news is business news, right? It, there, there isn't um, there isn't a lot of different spins that you can or should put on it. There versus regular media. Um, it is sometimes about just getting more people to tune in. People that read us know it's hardcore business news, that it's facts, it's data. So it, it does make it a little bit easier. Um, you know, the, the, of course, there's always things that come over the newswire that we're really tempted to push out on social media. We have a great audience, but we really have to look, is it doing a service, number one, to our readers and number two, to the company? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you think about the influence that you have and the stories that you're printing, and it is business focused, do you feel like it's been more challenging with this time that we're in to produce those stories? Or do you feel like, I mean, has anything really changed in terms of what you're printing and what you're sharing with your audience and, and the leaders that are tuning in? Are they looking for something different? Now, I think on the business side, they're still looking for the business news. I think where it has changed is maybe they're looking to us for a little bit more direction, which puts a little bit more onus on, you know, what do we do with the work from home? What do we do with events? Because we are out there and so visible, it, it's, it puts a little bit more ownership on us to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to be good, you know, um, out in the community as well. Um, but the other part of it, I think it's, again, the news is truly news. And... COVID has, I guess I'm kind of struggling with that one a little bit and the fact that the news doesn't change. You know, the, the data doesn't really change, the direction changes. Our content has probably been driven a little bit more towards what companies are doing, how we're treating employees, um, diversity and education. The type of content may have changed to be more um, what the marketplace is looking mm -hmm. for right now. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just a matter of staying relevant in what our readers are looking for. So if we don't change the spin on it. We just change to make sure that we're getting more of the types of stories that they're, they're interested in reading and helping them to grow and helping them to be better in the community that they're serving. Absolutely. So as we think about the types of stories, to your point, I know that um, your readership is far and wide, I'm sure, outside of Arizona as well. Um, we've been fortunate in our state in terms of how we weathered the pandemic and how we continue to, to grow and expand and, and new companies are attracted. Um, as you think about moving ahead in leadership and you think about where the focus will be for AZ Big Media, do you feel like it will continue to grow and change or do you feel like it's just based on what's happening in the market and, and that's how you'll respond in terms of how you're engaging your audience? Well, we're, how we're engaging is changing. And the fact that we've added podcasts now and, you know, finding that people want to consume news and in, in small snippets, you know, 15 minute, you know, interesting things. And, you know, we've got a good lineup of guests that are coming on to do that. And, you know, it's all things Arizona business and, and that truly does encompass so many different things. So that's fun and exciting for me to get to meet and, and talk to different people. Um, you know, we've really grown our digital but we're really finding a lot of people still like to consume the high-end quality business to business magazines. So really for us, it's making sure that we're available in any platform that people want to find us. Let's talk a little bit about those magazines so people can find them. What I know you mentioned eight. So let's talk a little bit about what they are and, and how they could how they could find them besides online. Well, yeah, all of our magazines you can find online. Um, we try to post them so that you can actually look through the print version. We have what we call the controlled distribution. So we make sure that our magazine, so talking about our Arizona business and our Arizona real estate magazine, we publish those every other month. 
And we do, we make sure that all of the people that are moving into the Valley that are new business leaders, people that have moved up into new positions, we use uh, a multitude of services to check to make sure that as people are going into your C-level executive positions, we add them into the distribution. So we do get asked from people occasionally, but the majority of it is us reaching out and making sure that when they start their new positions, they have our publication there and they are met with the you know, most updated business news possible. Um, and then on the nice part of it is we are one of the only medias that don't have a paywall. So all of our content that is available um, in the magazine plus uh, you know, expanded for everything online, there's no paywall or subscriptions needed. So that's available to everybody as well. So kind of nice. That is very nice and very different for sure. And then we have our ranking Arizona product that we produce every year. That is really just a voter ranking of um, many, many different types of businesses. Uh, we also produce a business leaders at the, uh, in the fall of every year that's um, some nomination um, of just your local business leaders. And we also produce our, uh, P our PTK, which is our people and projects to know in commercial real estate in the fall. Um, and then we have another division that produces our play ball. We are one of the only partners with the Cactus League. So you can find us in all the Cactus League spring training games. Fingers crossed. Everything's back this year and back to normal. That was, it was a tough one last year. Um, and then Experience Arizona that we produce in the spring, summer, and fall, winter that is done in the, it's uh, put at the airports and through many local hotels and stuff for Valley visitors. So really, we kind of encompass a lot of different type of readers throughout the year. Absolutely. It's tremendous. It's <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking you do. Do you sleep? I'm thinking that's just... I hire great people so I can sleep. Yes. That's awesome. That is tremendous. So as we wrap up, Couple pieces, a couple pieces of advice that you would give new leaders walking into the role of leader uh, for the first time. What's some advice that you might share to, to help them? Um, you know, a, a couple of things that I think that I didn't do well was allow myself to be vulnerable. I think I stepped into a leader role and just assumed since I had the title, I was a good leader. Um, and I wasn't. You know, you, you do have to learn, learn what it means to lead. Um, I really think people need to spend time educating themselves. You know, luckily, I worked for a large company that offered a lot of different training. And it was nice. I was actually to become one of the trainers eventually. But you really have to start doing some training and educate yourself. Um, and then again, an accountability partner and a mentor and find somebody to emulate. And if you can kind of put all of those together and you think about it, each of those, Christine, is really about growing yourself. None of it is about the people. It really is about growing yourself and doing that. People will follow you. If people see you allowing, you know, trying to get better, people want to help you. If you come in feeling you know everything, they don't have the desire to help you. So, you know, I, I kind of always looked at it. People are going to do better either in spite of me or because of me. And my goal is I want it to be because of me, right? I, even if it was tough love for them, I want to do something that helps make them better. Um, and, you know, another thing is I, I think leaders nowadays have a tendency to tell people what they want to hear. Tell them what they need to hear. Be soft, be gentle, be kind, but tell them what they need to hear because you don't grow with that manager that just tells you you're always doing a great job. Um, you know, I will tell you one of my uh, favorite salespeople and the practices that I've done, um, at the end of every sales call that I go on, and I don't care how seasoned and tenure the rep is, they automatically get in the car, the debrief with me afterwards and tell me two or three things that went well or two or three things they wish they did better. And it's just become a general practice. But, you know, it makes me do the same. You know, I'll turn around and go, you know what? I wish I had done this. I wish I had let you talk at this point. I should have been more organized here. And you know, truly you grow together. So I think those are some really good business practices, some leadership practices. Great advice. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being with us today. How can people find your magazines and how can they find you, Amy? Uh, best way is probably just go to azbigmedia.com. All the contact information is on there to reach out to us and um, send myself or one of us an email on the contact us and we'd be happy to make sure we supply them with the magazine. Um, and in addition, the content is always there. So, you know, help yourself. You can go as many pages deep with no paywall to stop you from reading some good news. Fantastic. So. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christine. I appreciate the time. Brightworks Consulting hosts this podcast and YouTube channel to spotlight the leadership around the world that is changing lives. Brightworks offers a myriad of consulting services in the public and private sector to include diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions for any size company. 
You can find us at www.brightworksconsulting.com. We're honored to have Best Companies AZ as a presenting sponsor for this podcast. Best Companies AZ is your number one source for regional employer branding. You can find them at www.bestcompaniesaz.com.